folks, thanks for tuning into the video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Asics Gel Cumulus 22 running shoe, how it held up to 300 miles and how many more miles, if any, can you expect to get out of this shoe. So this is the 22nd version of the Gel Cumulus. That means this is an oldie but goodie for Asics and it has a big group of folks and fans who just keep going back and getting this shoe year after year. So this is a neutral running shoe. It's designed for roads. It has a 10 millimeter drop. So the heel is 10 millimeters higher than the forefoot. It is designed for both a neutral and under pronation. Uh, when I purchased it, I, I, have, I wear a size 12. It weighed 10.9 ounces after 300 miles. It was still 10.9 ounces. It was uh, true to size and it cost $120. So one of the improvements Asus claims to have made with this version is they've made it a softer ride. They've done that in three ways. One, the, the groove on the forefoot, the flex groove, they have said they've made it deeper. They've added a bit more cushion to the midsole to make it pill more pillowy. And finally, in the heel, they said they've designed it so where the heel strikes the ground, they have isolated the impact. I actually don't know what that means. Uh, from the marketing standpoint, I guess it sounds impressive, but between those three things, they have made this a softer ride. They've also changed this compound on the outer sole to make it more resistant to wear. And they've added a seamless 3D inner liner throughout the shoe, the fit. With some shoes, I feel like I'll try them out in the store, they have a certain feel to them, and then I'll go ahead and take them on my first run and it doesn't quite feel like what I was anticipating. But I would tell you that is definitely not the case with this gel cumulus. What you feel is what you get. So once you try them out in the store, you can expect to have that same feeling from mile one through mile 300. Now, uh, it is a softer shoe. Uh, it is not as soft as, say, the Diodora Fly Hip, uh, but it's not as firm as the Ghost, uh, Brooks Ghost or the New Balance 880. So uh, for me, it was soft, and it, but it didn't quite cross the threshold of being squishy, which is a good thing. So uh, for the heel, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the ankle collar. Uh, I don't like thick ankle collars. This one is, is just uh, thin enough and it transitions nicely into the rest of the heel. So I always felt comfortable and locked in on the heel. Uh, for the mid midsole, uh, there's not particularly much in the way of, uh, of arch support, but I think it's done that way in order to accommodate both the neutral and under pronation. It is a non-gusseted tongue, as you'll see. Uh, but I had no issues there. Uh, I, I'm always a fan of these flat laces. I always feel that it locks me into place better and it, and it, kept, the, uh, and it kept the tongue in place just fine. Um, and for the toe box, uh, it is, I've seen it on the other reviews, they say the toe box seems to tend be a little bit wider. I didn't feel that uh, and I do have narrow feet. I, I thought it fit comfortably. Um, one word about my feet. It's funny. Uh, my daughter the other day was looking at them and said, "Gosh, you got your feet look like Rasputin's." So I don't know if there's actually any photographic evidence documented of what Rasputin's feet look like. Um, rest assured, it wasn't a compliment. And I have to say that if Rasputin had feet that looked like mine, I actually feel bad for Rasputin. But uh, so. As far as this 3D inner liner, uh, you know, I, I went this seamless 3D liner. I went and I, and I felt other shoes and it felt the exact same as other shoes. So uh, if they did have seams on previous versions and all I can say, it's about time that they put in this seamless 3D liner. I thought the shoe breathed very well. Uh, I never had any pressure points. And honestly, it felt the same from mile 300 as it did at mile one. So the goal of every shoe company is to create that shoe that gives you that perfect balance right of cushioning and reflectivity or responsiveness 
Uh, for ASICs with this shoe, they try and achieve that through this uh, gel pad that you can see on the heel. Uh, this is the namesake for the shoe, for the gel cumulus, as well as the gel nimbus. Um, and then they have this uh, flight foam uh, midsole that, uh, you know, so the gel, it, it's the pad, gel pad, cushions your impact, the flight foam midsole helps to propel you forward. Uh, well, for me, this shoe lacked reflexivity and responsiveness that I get in some of my other shoes. Uh, I, I did like the cushioning, uh, but if you look at it over the 300 miles, you know, I like to put them on graphs and this is a pretty boring graph. Uh, it's almost two straight lines. I actually felt that the cushioning didn't change at all, which is a, is a good thing. So to 300 miles, it stayed the same. The reflectivity yeah, it lost just a little bit, and I'd say about 5%. As for the responsiveness on different surfaces uh, and different speeds, I really didn't feel any difference. That could be a good thing for some folks, I think. Uh, usually, I find with most shoes, they seem to have a sweet spot. If you're going at a certain speed on a, uh, you know, whether on a track or on asphalt, where they seem to get the best return out of it. Uh, but these, uh, it didn't matter whether I was on a track, whether I was on the road, if I was on crushed gravel. Uh, I didn't find much difference at all uh, and whether I was doing some speed workout or uh, j just a slower, longer run. So again, that's not a good or bad thing necessarily. Uh, you know, if, if you're just looking for consistency, you're going to find it here. As far as the grip and the wear, uh, thought the grip was just fine. Uh, uh, again, I used that on all those surfaces. I even used it on a couple trail runs. Uh, and even when it was wet out, the, it was a solid footing. So as far as the wear, um, so this is this uh, lime green cap it was one of the, the improvements as this compound was supposed to be more resistance to wear. Uh, and it, it certainly it held up great so far through the 300 miles. Um, I did find it was uh, like if you Right in here, it was starting to come away a little bit uh, at one point. Uh, but otherwise, this cap is, this heel cap is, is held up very well. Uh, and I, I think this is going to be good, certainly for at least another 100, 150 miles. So to summarize, ASICS says this shoe is designed for all types of runners, whether you know, your first run or you've been running for years, uh, different speed. And being that it's the 22nd version of it, it obviously has a big following. A lot of people who do uh, enjoy the shoe and keep coming back to it. Uh, I think if you're looking for a more firm shoe, uh, this might not do it for you or for that responsiveness and speed. Uh, but the good news is if you try them on in the store and do, do a little bit of running around, I think what you feel is what you're going to get. That's what you can expect to have on the shoe for all 300 miles. Uh, and probably one of the best things is this has got a lot of miles left in it. Uh, I would say you're going to easily get another 100 to possibly even 200 more miles. So you're going to get your money's worth out of this Gel Cumulus 22. So I hope you enjoyed this review and found it useful. If so, please go ahead and click the thumbs up button right down below. Also, if you've run in previous versions or if you have thoughts on uh, this Gel Cumulus 22, Feel free to put them in the comments section. It's always helpful for people to hear what other folks' thoughts are. Uh, the next shoe we're going to be reviewing is a New Balance 880. So go ahead and please, if you subscribe to our channel, just again the subscribe button right down there, you'll see a little bell will pop up. You click that and you'll get a notification anytime we do a shoe review or post any of our videos. So thanks for, again for watching and keep racing the nation. So I've known my wife getting close to 30 years now uh, and after 30 years you know you have to be innovative uh, to find stupid trivial things to argue about so we were driving the other day and it was raining uh, and I think for my wife she'd be happy with just with an on off switch as soon as it starts to rain doesn't matter the intensity they're on me I've tried, I've named each of my settings. So I have dew, drizzle, spit, sprinkle, shower, downpour, and deluge. So we were driving 
uh, and it was clearly just spitting out. So of course I had it on the spit setting. But my wife was arguing that it was needed to be at least at shower or even downpour. So, uh, you know, we argued for a couple miles and, and then I, I finally did, you know, after 30 years you learn to compromise. So I did go from the spit up to the shower setting. Uh, so that's the stupid, trivial segment of things to argue with your wife about.